All right, now that we've learned about EKG, um, why don't we get some practice doing this? Because we can talk about it all day long, but until we actually get out there and get some experience and get some practice with it, it is hard to follow. So let's break down these simple strips step-by-step. So if you remember the steps to figuring out EKG, and if you don't have to have these memorized yet, but I would recommend kind of starting to look at them, we're gonna do a bunch back to back, and hopefully that'll help to uh, you to better understand um, this kind of process. But we start by counting the rate. We wanna see, is it slow or fast? That's gonna to help to identify what is this rhythm, and we're gonna count the QRSs. And again, we're gonna get practice with this. So if you don't know how to do this, don't worry, we're gonna do it soon. We're also gonna see, is the, is the rhythm regular or irregular? Then we wanna check, are there regular P waves present? In other words, if I look at it, can I obviously see there's a P wave there? Am I fighting it? If I'm fighting it, there's probably not a regular P wave there. Um, and then is my QRS skinny or fat? And this is the one that people find most confusing, but don't worry, like I said, we're gonna get some practice. So here's strip number one. So we're gonna go up here to our little drawler and we're gonna start first, like I mentioned, um, <clears throat> the first step that we want to take, and let me make this a little bit bigger so I'm not straining so much. So the first step that we wanna take is we want to count the rate. So I do that by counting these pointy things here. So I'm gonna count them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I take that number and then I am going to multiply it. I'm gonna take eight. Eight, right okay yeah second guess myself and I'm going to times it by 10 and that's how I get my heart rate so this heart rate is 80 so that's the first step so I have a heart rate of 80 the next step I want to do is see is it regular so what I'm going to do then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at the space in between these pointy things is this space normal or re normal regular um, you know, is there the same amount of space between each of these? And you can usually look at them. Does this rhythm look pretty regular? To me, it does. So this is regular. So I'm going to put regular here. Then I want to look and see if they're normal P waves. So P waves are going to be this, this smaller hill before the pointy thing. I want to see, do I have regular P waves? Like, is there one before the pointy thing? And it looks like, yeah, they're here. They're regular. Um, and then I want to look at my QRS next and see, is it skinny or fat? And the way that I do that is, let me get my smaller thing here and I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do here is what you do is you, um, you're looking at the space between this and this. It shouldn't be more like, so it shouldn't be more than three of these boxes. So in other words, it shouldn't be more than... Um, what do you call it? this amount of space? So if it's not, it's a skinny rhythm, which means it's normal or it's a top of the heart rhythm. We'll talk about that. But this looks normal. There's not, where'd my little pointer go? Okay, because it always disappears when it's tiny. Um, there's not a lot. This is, this is a skinny QRS or a skinny pointy thing. It's not very fat. And it'll be easier once we see a fat rhythm for you to understand what I mean. So then I have to start trying to name my rhythm. I have a rhythm that is um has a heart rate of 80 and what's the normal heart rate 60 to 100 so my heart rate's normal i have a regular um you know um, rhythm in between each beat or regular space between each beat i have p waves i have skinny qrs's and t waves so i have everything that's normal so what is this rhythm if everything is normal then i have normal sinus rhythm so i always start with normal it always helps to start with normal and then move from there to the scarier stuff <gasps> like this. So here's strip number two. So let's look at this. Of course, we're going to do this uniformly each way. So each time so that we can, um, you know, kind of keep that like I always recommend kind of doing it the same way every time. So first things first, can you count a rate on this? Uh, question mark? I don't know what the rate is. I don't know how many of these things are like, is this one? I don't know. So but it's something fast and irregular, like I can't even count the rate. Then the second question, um, what do you call it is, uh, is it regular? Um, definitely not regular. So I'll put irregular. Oh, I guess a, well, that's supposed to be an I, the first one. I'm gonna just put irregular. So don't know what the rate is, it's irregular. Um, and then my next question is, are there P waves present? No P waves, I don't see any P waves. I just see a bunch of um, fat, weird things. 
Um, so no P waves. And then, you know, my last question is, are the QRSs skinny or fat? So this is one of the thing where the QRSs are fat. And so if we get our little uh, pointer out here, remember that the distance between this and this is not supposed to be more than three of these tiny small boxes, but look at how fat that is. And no offense, I'm sorry to offend you, um, EKG rhythm, but that is a very, very wide or fat rhythm. And so when, um, one of the things that we talked about in class is that when we have a fat rhythm, we have a ventricular rhythm. So um, now um, that I've narrowed it down, if I have a um, abnormal, um, you know, irregular, fat rhythm, I have either VTAC or VFib. Those are my only two choices um, for what you need to know this um, semester for ventricular rhythms. And so the difference between the two is in VFib, like I can't even tell what's going on. I can't count a rate. Um, it's very irregular. It's hard to um, even tell what anything that's going on. It's just fibrillation. It's just random, like er, 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 really irritable. So um, this is what that seems like. So if it's just a random fibrillation, it's not like clear cut and you, it'll make more when we look at ventricular tachycardia, but this is V or ventricular fibrillation. So yes. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so now we have something else. Let me back up a little bit so we can count this right. All right, so let's start again. We're gonna do our uniform, let's count. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, bear with me, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I take my 19 times 10. It's always gonna be times 10 and that equals that my heart rate is 190. Is that slow or fast? That is super fast. So I already know I'm dealing with some sort of tachycardia. I just have to figure out the rest of the name. If it's what kind of tachycardia it is, is it normal tachycardia like sinus or is it some other type of tachycardia? So then the next thing that I need to check is um, I need to see if there is any, uh, what do you call them, um, if it's regular. So yes, yeah, sorry, I lost myself for a second there. So I'm checking the distance between these, between each of these and um, you know, it's it looks like it's the same. Like if you look at this heartbeat, it looks like it's pretty regular. It's like, it's pretty predictable, like it's back to back and you can see there's the same amount of space between all of these, um, you know, um, QRSs. So once I've done that, then I'm looking for P waves. So this is where sometimes people get confused because they're like, oh, here's a P wave. Um, but this is the thing is this is actually a T wave. You can see that it's coming straight off of um, the QRS at the end. So this is actually a T wave. So I don't see any P waves. So if you remember, we talked about that um, when there's a top of the heart or an atrial rhythm, I'm going to have, um, you know, uh, P waves that are missing or P waves that are strange or weird or fibrillatory. And so if you look at this one, what we have here is we have an issue. It looks like we're probably going to have an atrial problem. I can also confirm that by answering our last question. So remember, I need to figure out if, if my QRS is fat or skinny. So if I get my little pointer out here and we can zoom in a little bit, but if I get my pointer out here, I am looking at the distance between this and this. And again, that's not very far. That's like one small box, one to two small boxes. I don't want it to be more than three. So I have a skinny QRS. I have a fast rhythm. I'm just getting back to my fat pen. Um, so I have a fast rhythm. It looks like it's the top of the heart rhythm. Um, I cannot see any P waves and it's regular. So if you have a rhythm that's regular, fast and skinny, when I say fast, I mean greater than a rate of 150. What you have is supraventricular. All right, I'm gonna just do supravent. And I always tell people it's, it has ventricular because supra means above, supraventricular tachycardia. And I'm not probably gonna write this out because I'm already getting annoyed by this pen. So let's just do tachy. So this is supraventricular tachycardia. It's um, the rate is fast, greater than 150. Um, I have, it's regular. In other words, it's the same. That's why it, this is not atrial fibrillation because if this was atrial fibrillation, then um, what do you call it? It would be irregular, but I have a regular 
heartbeat. You know, it's it's dependable. There's the same amount of space in between. And then um, uh, what do you call them? It has a skinny QRS. So it's regular, um, skinny, and fast. And that's the three things that qualify this as being ventricular, uh, supraventricular tachycardia. It is a top of the heart issue. All right, so let's count this one and do this. All right, so now this one will take a little less time. I got one, two, three. So I start with my rate. So I got three beats times 10. And that is going to equal 30. So that's my heart rate. So then the next thing that I'm going to look for is um, the regularities. They're the same amount of space in between all of these. And so from the looks of it, from my two, the two options that I have, it looks like it's the same space between each. So it's 30, and is that high or low? That's low. Remember 60 to 100 is the normal heart rhythm. And so 30 um, is going to be a low rhythm. And so I'm low, but I'm regular. All right, so that's what I know so far. So let's get the rest of the details. And then I'm gonna look here um, and I'm looking to see, is there P waves present? Do they look regular? Well, I got one here. I've got one here. It looks like I have one here. And so it looks like I do have P waves and they look normal. It's got a little small hill there. Um, and so I got P waves. So that tells me that maybe I have something more normal. So, and then I'm going to look at my QRS. And um, again, it's the size of like two boxes. So it's skinny. So I have something that has normal P waves, normal QRS. There's T wave there. It's regular. The only thing that seems to be off about it is that slow. So if everything is normal, but the only thing that's abnormal is that it's a slow rate, then I have sinus bradycardia. So yes. Do, do, do. All righty. All right. Hopefully this is getting easier as we're doing this. If it's getting worse, then just turn me off and go watch something else. Um, or maybe go read a little bit more or do something else. But let's keep doing these. All right. So now we are going to um uh what do you call it um uh count this one we're gonna start with counting the rate right. we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so we've got um a rhythm that has sixteen we have times it by ten 16 QRSs times 10, which means my heart rate is 160. Um, and then we want to look to see, is it regular? And this actually seems pretty regular. The space in between, you know, these, each of these beats, it's pretty normal. So yeah, you can see it's about the same space in between each. It seems pretty regular, like it has a regular um, rhythm to it. So I've got something that's fast and regular. So, um, you know, that kind of sounded like supraventricular tachycardia, but I have to find out more. So um, next thing I need to look for P waves. And once again, you can kind of see here, these, this is a T wave right here. It's coming right off my QRS, um, but that's not a P wave. So that's a, um, that's a part of my T wave or my resting period. Um, and so I can't see my P waves. And so um, that kind of is a little bit of a clue, but um, in a lot of ventricular rhythms, remember, you also can't see the P waves. So then I need to look and I probably need to zoom in here um, at this, um, what do you call it? And so I need to look from the start to the, and I guess I could keep this one to make it easier. So, uh, oh no, I lost it. Oh, all right, I'm getting crazy. All right, here, let's see. So I'm starting here and then I'm measuring to like here and I'm seeing if this is less than um, three boxes, but look, this is many boxes. This is almost, this is almost like five boxes. So because it is what we call the QRS is fat, I know that I have a ventricular rhythm. So I have some sort of, oh, come on you, ventricular rhythm because my QRS is fat. So let's kind of break it down. So I have a rhythm that's regular, fast with a fat QRS. So I have a fast, regular, ventricular rhythm. And so this is what we call ventricular tachycardia. So remember that ventricular fibrillation, how it was really chaotic and you just couldn't depend on it. 
um, ventricular tachycardia is much more organized. It's regular. It's really fast. That doesn't don't that doesn't mean that it can't still be deadly or that it doesn't that the patient's getting great cardiac output, um, but it's fast and it's more regular, um, and then still has that fat QRS. I can count the rate here. Remember, in ventricular fibrillation, I just can't count the rate. I maybe can try, but it's not going to be pretty. I can't guarantee. Like I know exactly where the QRS is here or in this rhythm. I couldn't tell for ventricular fibrillation. All right, next one. So let's first count the rate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven times 10, and that is 70. So my heart rate is 70 beats per minute. Is that normal? It is, so I have a normal heart rate. So let's see if other things are normal. So let's check the regularity. Let's check the space in between these. And the space between all these is actually looking pretty normal. So it's looking like it's got about the same space in between. So it's actually pretty regular. So, so far I'm pretty regular. I got a normal heart rate. I got a regular regularity in between. Um, but now let's look at the P waves. There is way too many waves here. There should only be a T wave and then a P wave. And they are actually usually look different. Like usually you can tell the difference between them. They shouldn't look the same. All of these things look the same. So if I have a bunch of things that look like a P wave, this is what we call, oh, actually, let me, let me, let me finish first. I'm not gonna get into what it actually is first. But all I can tell you here is there's something not right with the P waves. They seem to be doing like this, um, this very strange up and down motion. Ah, I'm sorry, I suck at this. Um, so um, they're, uh, you know, kind of these crazy saw tooths, as we like to call them, hint, hint. Um, and so then my last thing, because I always like to be uniform, I like to go through every measure, even if it's like, oh, I think I know what this is. Um, so then I'm looking at the space between this QRS and seeing if it's fat or skinny, if I have a top of the heart problem or a bottom of the heart problem. So um, this QRS, it's skinny. So I have a top of the heart problem. So I have a skinny QRS. It's actually regular. It has a normal heart rate. The only thing that seems to be off is there is a whole bunch of these pointy P waves. Um, you're never going to have that many T waves. It's not possible. So the only option is if I have a bunch of extra you know, pointy things, there are a bunch of P waves. So when I have um, a rhythm that's regular, but has too many P waves or a bunch of shark, uh, shark tooth or saw tooth, um, you know, P waves in it, this is what we call a flutter. And it'll make a lot more sense how AFib is different when we go through it, but this is a flutter. It is fluttering your heart just looking at it, isn't it? I know it is for me. All right, so let's look at this one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we do six times 10, because this one doesn't count. We'll talk about what this one is here in a second. That does not count as a, that's not a regular heartbeat. So six times 10 equals 60, is that normal? Why, yes it is. So then we're going to see, is it regular? So regular space here, regular space here, here. So it's pretty regular until, until we get to this thing, everything's regular. So I've got something regular, the regular heart rate, then I'm gonna look for P waves and it looks like I got my P waves here. So that's regular. Then I'm gonna look at my QRS here. It's only one or two boxes, so that's regular. So it seems like everything that's is regular in this rhythm, like this is normal sinus rhythm until this guy comes in. So what is this guy? So this is what we call sinus rhythm with a PVC. So this is um, this is where that thing we talked about in class where the heart gets a little excited and pumps prematurely. Um, and so it kind of like, you know, it kind of, um, you know, equated it to like flushing the toilet too early. Your toilet hasn't fully refilled and you're already trying to flush the toilet again. And that's what happens with the heart sometimes is you have these abnormal rhythms. They're really not harmful when they're occasional um, or if they're, um, you know, just one at a time, but they start to get worrisome if you're having them frequently or if they're coming back to back in a row. Um, so effectively when it comes to this, I just, um, I'm gonna just kind of keep an eye on this but a lot of times when they have this you just have to keep in mind that they're not perfusing or getting blood out with this beat this is not a regular beat so that's why we don't want a lot of them if they happen occasionally it's okay i can let my heart get away with it but i don't want a lot of them all right so this is a different type of rhythm um what's my rate? uh nothing huh uh what is my regularity uh, uh, uh nothing uh how are my p waves doing uh, uh, uh nothing and how are my QRSs? Oh, there's none. So I have a flat line. So what do I have here? I have a systole. 
probably the easiest one. I know y'all are hoping, be like, please let the only rhythm on the test be a systole, please, Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so let's look at this one. So let's count first. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have a rate of 14. We do 14 times 10. That is going to be a rate of 140. So is that normal? No, that's fast. So I've got a fast rhythm. So I've got some sort of tachycardia or some sort of rapid um, uh, rhythm. And then the next step is I need to uh, check my regularities. They're the same space between these. Whoa, look at this one. This is one of those kind of like that ventricular fibrillation. This is really irregular. Like look at all the differences in the space between these. It's very irregular. So I have a rhythm that's fast and irregular. And it looks like, I mean, it's all over the place. It's always irregular. There's no like pattern to it. Um, now let me check my P waves out. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? All I see is a bunch of squiggles. So I don't see any regular P waves. I can't sit there and say any of that looks like a P wave. And then I need to look at my QRS. So now I'm gonna look here. I've got one to two boxes there. So I've got something that's a skinny rhythm. So it's a top of the heart rhythm. It's fast and irregular. So this is um, the rhythm that we talk about. That is AFib, it is regularly irregular. Um, and so when I'm looking at this rhythm, it can be a normal heart rate or it can be fast, but no matter what, it is regularly irregular. It's the only rhythm aside from V-fib that we talk about that is irregular. So if I see a rhythm and it has a bunch of P waves that, or I should say a bunch of squigglies that are supposed to be P waves um, and it's irregular, I can count on it probably being AFib. So regularly irregular in the squiggly little P wave um, uh, lines. All right, last but not least. So we got, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I got fourteen times ten equals, I have a rate of 140. So my rate's 140, so I'm fast. Let's check everything else. The distance between these looks the same. So it looks like I'm pretty regular. So I'm fast and regular so far. I'm looking at my P waves. I've got normal P waves. They looks like there's one before each. I can see it's a little hill. You kind of see how that P wave and that P wave look different. So I've got regular P waves and I'm gonna look at my QRS and I can barely tell like, but uh, <laughs> this is super skinny. Um, but um, yeah, this looks like it's maybe like one box. <laughs> so yeah, so this is definitely, um, it looks like it's fast skinny and um, and regular. So wouldn't this be super ventricular tachycardia? Hmm, actually not. So one of the other things that um, differentiates supraventricular tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia from this, which is sinus tachycardia, this is what we call ST or sinus tachycardia, um, is that what is my rate? If my rate is greater than 150, it is supraventricular tachycardia. If my rate is less than 150, it's going to be sinus tachycardia. The other thing is if you remember in supraventricular tachycardia, I could not see my P waves. Here I can see my P waves. They exist. So I'm in a sinus rhythm. Sinus means I have a P wave, a T wave, and a Q, uh, uh, sorry, P wave, a QRS, and a T wave, and they're all regular. They're what they're supposed to be. Um, and so um, that's what makes this sign is I can see my P waves, my rate is less than 150, but I am um, regular, um, fast and skinny. But again, rate less than 150 and I can see my P waves. That's what makes that different. Well, that is all I've got for practice today. Um, I hope that this kind of helped to break down some of these things that might can seem kind of scary and overwhelming, but sometimes the more that you practice them and look at them, and there's lots of resources on my Google Drive to get more practice and look at these rhythms. So go out and explore some more rhythms today yourself. See you later.